Hello my darlings, today I'm delivering to you another Genshin Impact Story Deluke X Listener and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we dive right into it, since this isn't a Boku no Hero story and not a Bakugo story, it is especially important that you watch the video until the end, like or dislike it and comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment, just tell me what your favorite part of the story was, okay? The reason is that uh, if you do that, I get a higher standing in YouTube algorithm and then more people watch my show. For example, maybe you can support me on Patreon and maybe then a person that likes my videos and would support my Patreon, could support my Patreon, would watch my videos. So please, it really helps me a lot. Also remember to share the video by posting it on <laughs> various Genshin Impact discords. I know you shippers have your Genshin Impact shipper uh, discords. I know. <laughs> Maybe post it on Reddit. <laughs> that would be funny. Anyways, let's dive right into it, shall we? Enjoy. The early morning sun was shining into your face, waking you out of a pleasant dream. Slowly you inhaled. The first breath of a new day was something you cherished deeply. You were about to quietly slip out from under your blanket when the shadow of a tranquil hum came from behind you. A blush began to decorate your pale face, and you turned around. Eyes widened. Behind you lay the sleeping form of an unclothed man. The thin white blanket just barely covered his groin, and your heart skipped a beat. His hair was as red as the feather of a phoenix. It was messy from both sleep and the past night, yet it had settled around his shoulders. A few of his strands loosely hung over his muscular chest. His muscles looked like they were carved out of white marble. And his skin spoke of the man's many battles in the form of deep scars. Yet his face had been spared the same treatment. He looked young. His lips had a beautiful and healthy pink color. But regardless of his scars, you would still call his body immaculate. His breathing was slow and peaceful. Just hearing it calmed you like a silent prayer. Occasionally, he would rub his cheek against the pillow and let out these quiet hums. Despite your own exposed form, or maybe because of it, you wanted to press your body against his own, so that you could bask in the softness of each other for just one more moment. This man had been visiting your cathedral for a while. He was widely known. Diluc Ragvindre, a nobleman and the owner of the Dawn Winery. He was responsible for Mondstadt's current economic boom. It was an honor just to be in his presence, especially in the way that you were right now. Your eyes moved back to your window for just a moment. Maybe you should attend breakfast with the other nuns. 
and deal with this later. Yet, your eyes still felt heavy, and your instincts begged you to return to the warmth of Diluc's body. But there wasn't much time to think, nor were you in the emotional state to do so, as his eyes slowly opened and focused on you, like a hawk aiming at a mouse. Prepping himself up on one arm, he admired your form. Good morning, beautiful, he said in a hushed tone, and your heart skipped a beat. I was afraid that last night was nothing more than a sweet dream. You inhaled sharply, and he chuckled lightly. <laughs> Watching you in the light like this, you look like a goddess. You blushed, unable to muster up a single sentence. A few days ago, maybe weeks, Diluc had first laid his eyes upon you, the new nun of the Favonius Cathedral. You had been taking a stroll in the cathedral's gardens, and you found himself unable to take his eyes off you, his mind immediately enamored by your beauty. On that day, he had attended choir practice as one of the bystanders. It had been his first time inside the old church for years, and he was glad that practice was still open to the public. It had taken him only seconds to find you within the crowd of singing nuns. He tried to imagine which voice belonged to you, as he didn't care much for the meaning of the song. After all, praising Lord Barbados wasn't really something he liked. This was due to the fact that most nights the god Barbados was lying in his tavern, blackout drunk, his tap ever growing larger. Of course, you had noticed the dark gentleman in the cathedral staring at you. But like any good nun, you didn't complain, nor did you stare back. In fact, you were enjoying the attention you were getting from the man. It had encouraged you to give it your all. It was a shame it was just practice. And afterwards, he sought you out. And behind the deaconess's back, you spent the entire afternoon talking in the gardens. Mostly about your vision. Dendrovisions were a rarity in Mondstadt. And then he switched the subject to talk about each other's past. Diluc felt as if he had never heard a more sweet voice before. Never felt a gentler touch even though at the time it was over his gloved hand. And never did he feel such a rush of emotions before. All he knew was that he liked it, and he wanted to meet up with you again as soon as possible. You weren't sure if what happened last night was a mistake or not. Knowing he was awake now, you swiftly covered your shame from him. Luckily, he refrained from commenting. I... I should leave, you said, stuttering. Knowing full well if you wouldn't outright flee from him, you would find yourself back in his arms. He smiled. 
Duluk had taken you last night. He had made you his. But despite that, he had remained the gentleman that he is. He didn't hurt you. Not that he didn't. Not that he intended it. And if he would have, he could never forgive himself. You reached a hand out for your garments, but stopped yourself. As if putting them on would make last night null and void. You look unsure, my love. He said with a smile across his face. It was that smile. Yesterday when he ambushed you in a winding corridor of the cathedral, you had pressed yourself against the wall and his hand was next to your head, his face inching closer and closer. You are confused yet not afraid, but you wondered why this man was suddenly assaulting you like this, his mouth a mere inch from your ear. He whispered, You are the most beautiful flower in Mondstadt. Your smile brightens my day. And your eyes are radiant with your kindness and intelligence. I love spending time with you. And your voice adds cheer to even the most dreary of days. I love you with all my heart. And he smiled that smile he was giving you right now. How can someone remain holy after a compliment like that with a body that was made for sin pressed against you? How could you possibly have declined him? His lips gently pressed onto yours, at first soft, as if he was unsure of whether or not he was overstepping a boundary. But once your hand had found his shoulders, pushing him further into you, his own began to hungrily explore your body. And soon, all your senses had been taken over by him, and all you could feel was passion, desire, and lust. Dear look, I... You weren't sure of what to say next. Come back, he said and you guided a finger to your mouth, slightly chewing on it. Why were you so anxious all of a sudden? Come on. It's cold, he urged. And you gave up, giving in to your eternal desires. You climbed back into your bed, and pulled the blanket over your delicate frame. His arms pulling you in almost immediately. Pressing you against his body. Sharing the warmth and peace of the moment. Diluc's head nuzzled into the side of your neck. His lips made gentle contact with your skin, and his arms slid across your back. You closed your eyes again, wallowing in the unconditional love he was giving you. I love you, you said, as you drifted off into sleep once more.